Hello, everybody. Welcome to Beyond BMR. I am your host, Bigfoot Michigan Rob. How's everybody doing? Tuesday, 9 o'clock, as I always say, in the east here. It's a great state of Michigan. I appreciate everybody coming on in tonight. Fantastic show. Rod Nichols, Bexar County, Bigfoot, joining us shortly. Thanks for taking your time out once again. Beyond BMR goes beyond the mysteries of the world. We take you on a deep dive surrounding Bigfoot, Dogman, time travel, paranormal, all the mysteries of the world. We bring it all together on this show with our fantastic ghosts, ghosts, guests. Joining me in Studio B from Missouri, the lovely Krista from the Blondes and the Booze Paranormal Podcast. Check them out. Go subscribe if not already. Thanks all so much for that. If this is your first time here, please subscribe to Bigfoot, Michigan Rob on YouTube, the Blondes and the Booze Paranormal Podcast on YouTube, and of course, Texas from Porch Found on YouTube. Also, for everybody joining us, the Super Chats open. Yes, the Super Chats are a great way to help support what we do around here. Your donations are greatly appreciated. Also, you can become a BMR Pirates. Arr, you can join today with the 75 of you strong. Thank you for that. Join up. You get a picture of me with my bandana. And speaking of bandanas, I got another announcement later to make on my bandanas. You're all going to love it. So thanks for coming on in. You can find us on Spreaker, iHeart, and KPNL Radio, all podcasting platforms. Check us out on our about pages on YouTube where we have all our events and our schedules and things like that. And speaking of our schedules, Monday is on Texas Front Porch. You can find Tex at 8 o'clock in the evening to 11 Eastern Standard Time. Tuesdays beyond BMR, 9 o'clock in the East. Wednesdays, Inhumanoids with Barton Nunnally, 9 o'clock in the East. Subscribe to Barton if not already. Thursday, right back here, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Brunch with Bigfoot, Michigan Rob. Great, fantastic show every afternoon for your viewing pleasure. Thursdays, Thursdays, a little something different. Starting ahead of the Blondes and Booze, Monica Rollins. Our paranormal world on Texas Front Porch. Right after that, the Blondes and the Booze Paranormal Podcast at 9 o'clock in the East. And you know, if you need more woo with the booze, you get them again Friday. An hour earlier at 8 with the lovely Krista and Brandy doing their thing on Fridays. Saturday we're off, but I got to tell you, Krista and I have been doing a late night show on Saturdays. It's kind of impromptu. It's not quite part of the schedule. It's, you know, logistics and whether or not we want to do one. But a couple times a week, BMR and Krista Live, midnight for your viewing pleasures. Check that out. What you need to do is turn on the alert bell to capture that show because I don't know when it's going to come on. It's not an official part of the rotation, but I'll, it's going to be twice a month. I'm I, I'm pretty sure about that. Sunday's Truth or Tinfoil, that is there. That's the channel. It's a standalone channel. That's with Randy and Brandy. So you have to subscribe to Truth or Tinfoil. It was podcasting on Texas Front Porch. Now they are their own platform truth or tinfoil subscribe that's a great show check them out sunday after them and they come on at six in the east seven in the east is um text with infamous minds and that's true crime if you're into true crime and i gotta tell you krista when i bring you up it's always a mouthful uh it's always a mouthful but it's a pleasure for me to um talk about all the great channels of course josh Turner. PRT, and you can find Josh just about every day, it seems. Shout out to Josh out there. Also, a shout out. I've got to tell you, we got a great event coming up, and it's getting here pretty closely. June 7th through the 8th is the Alabama Bigfoot Conference. Speaker lineup, our host is, of course, Tex Wesson. He's the master of ceremonies. Speakers are Barton Nunnally, Daryl Denton, the Blondes, and the Booze. Jason McLean, Greg Ogles, Martin Groves, and of course, yours truly, BMR. Tickets, 30 bucks online, 35 at the door. And I tell you what, you can't find 
prices cheaper than that. Trust me. June 7th is a meet and greet. Go to BamaBigfootConference.com to find out where the location is. It's already booked already. However, we will not turn you away at the door. Come on in and uh, let's let's chat. Let's chat before the conference. It's brought to you by Sidekicks Paranormal. That's right, a new sponsor. So thanks to Sidekicks for that. One last announcement for those of you that bought my book, Bigfoot Mission Represents True Cryptid Encounters, book one, found on Amazon. I appreciate it. The link is pinned in this show. The link is also my YouTube channel. And all you need to do is go to Amazon, type in Bigfoot Mr. Rob. The book will pull up. I'm 16 reviews away from hitting the analytics that Amazon needs to further push the book. So if you have bought it, please do me that favor. Leave a review, whatever you need to do. With that being said, we're going to move on, get the show rolling. First off, I'm bringing up the lovely Krista from the Blondes and Booze. Hey. Well, hello, Krista. How's it going? Going good. Going good. I just, uh, it's funny, I just received a, a text from Letitia Nunley, and she's like, oh, I didn't realize, I just forgot about the Amar show tonight. <laughs> so I'm sure she'll be in chat. Well, Letitia did not have the alert bell on, I'm sure. Yep, yep. <laughs> so that goes, just because Letitia's always here. Mm-hmm. Letitia's always here, and you know, the alert bell sometimes, you guys, the thing about YouTube, man, is you always got to check the YouTube, especially you if you're a fan of a show, whether it's mine, Krista, Tex, any of, any, them. any of them. Make sure you're still subscribed for one. Mm-hmm. And number two, you got to make sure the alert bell's on because sometimes that happens, you know. Yep. And so, yeah, there's always something to check out. A big thing is that they they unsubscribe people because that has happened to me. I was even unsubscribed to my <clears> own <throat> channel. What does that tell you? I've never gotten an alert bell to my show once mm-hmm. since I've been doing this now. Yep. And I am not kidding. Mm-hmm. I'm not kidding. I want to say hi to everybody that's coming on in chat. If I don't say hi to you, don't mean I don't love you. Thanks for coming in. Absolutely. And I also have to make mention, Chris, that, you know, we got the conference coming up. Mm-hmm. And I told you my goal is to have 4,000 subscribers by June 1st. Yes. Now. As of today, if I get seven more subscribers just today, I'll have 3,700. So in the next two months, Krista, I need uh, 300 subs. I think that's doable. I think you can right? do that. You know, so everybody, if you're not subscribed, I'm trying to hit that 4,000. Yes. I'm going to get it in two months. Now, the lovely Krista, or not Krista, mm-hmm. you're lovely, of course, but you got Catherine Gay. I don't know if she's in chat right now. I said, Rob, you're going to get 5000 in May. I said, thank you for that, but I don't <laughs> think quite that. I'll take 4000 I'll take 4000 in June. Mm-hmm. You never so, know, though. So, you never yeah, know. you know, I'm excited to get this show started. I Me saw, too. I met Rod, not personally. I saw him on your show along mm-hmm. with Josh. Fantastic, fantastic show you guys put on. Well, thank you. We uh, uh, actually, we were at the um, the Kling Brothers. They had the Paracon, uh, the Texas um, Paracon thing that he did that they did down there. And Rod was there also, and he kind of, he was sitting next to Tex. His booth was, and and um, so we just kind of talked. And then that night, we all ended up going to dinner together. And next thing you know, he's on our show. So that's how things work, right? Yeah, that's how it works. It's all word of mouth, <laughs> you know. That's all word. It's all mm-hmm. word of mouth. Yeah. And um, and with that being said, uh, we're going to bring up this fantastic guest, Rod Nichols. Mm-hmm. So, Rod, two, one, here you are. <laughs> hey. Here I am. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, right out of the get-go, I want to thank Paranormal Pixie for gifting five Bigfoot Mr. Mm-hmm. Rob members. You're all, now we have five new pirates, Krista. Good deal. Thank you, uh, Laura. Thank you. I love Laura. She's great. She's been on my She's show great. before. Awesome. And of course, the super chat is open. Yeah. Thank you. What a way to start April 2nd. Absolutely. Great way to start. And we have a great guest to start off April 2nd. And again, Rod, when I saw you on the show with Kristen and Josh, I said, man, this guy's knowledgeable. He's into yeah. it. He's a, a true person when he when you spoke. And yeah. 
and everything you said, I I hung on to, and I'm like, yeah, this is a this is a person I like to have on, and you and you do yep. yourself justice uh, with a Bexar. Um, what is it, Bexar County Cryptids? It's uh, it's actually Bear. It, the X is silent. It's uh, Bear County, the way we pronounce it here in San Antonio. Uh, you ask Josh Turner, he's gonna say Behar because he did his studying on mm-hmm. um, on on the uh, the county, the Indian county. So, um, Behar or Bear, I call it Bear. Bear County Bigfoot. So, I think it's got a nice ring to it. So that's where I keep it. Well, you know what? That sounds Spanish or Mexican, right? Behar. Am I incorrect with that or no? Is it spelled B E X A R? Yeah, it's. I, I I believe it is, and I think I want to say that the history of that name is actually, it's actually kind of like an accident. Um, I was on uh with uh, uh, uh I was on the From the Shadows podcast, and he did a little bit of poking around, and 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 found out that I think it was kind of like uh by uh by mistake, I guess that name, mm-hmm. uh B E X A R uh came about. So, um. He made light of that, and I was like, "Man, that's kind of crazy." I, I didn't know that because I, you know, I I didn't really, my my bad. I didn't really do the uh, the 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 history, or I didn't really mm-hmm. uh, dive into it. But um, everybody in San Antonio calls it Bear County. Okay, yeah. well you know, now I know because I did not know that for mm-hmm. yeah several months. I think I'm no, a member okay. of your Facebook group, and but now I but now I know, and now yeah. that's correct. You know, it's all semantics, just like it's all analytics. It, it is, yeah. you know. Yeah, I mean, story. no biggie, no big deal. Yeah. <laughs> no. Thank you, Liberty, for that to get the show yes, started thanks, as Liberty. well. That's awesome. Whoop. See, Krista, we're both. You know, we have the same minds. We have the same yeah. mind. <laughs> so, Rob, thanks. Well, thanks for coming on. Yeah, taking time out of your day, mm-hmm. and um, and you know, people say, yeah, you always start with the same old dumb question. But for me, it's not a dumb question when I when I meet someone, especially for the first time. Yeah, we're talking Bigfoot tonight, and of course, the obvious question is, what got you involved? Right. Um, my story, you know, I think like a lot of other field researchers, it's kind of the same. Like growing up with in search of, you know, with Leonard Nimoy and you know Patterson Gimlin film, you know, things of that nature. You know, I grew up, um, you know, in in the eighties. I was an eighties kid. And, um, you know, those, those were things that I, um, I clung, I cling to, you know, as, as a child, um, you know, I, and I've said this before, uh, you know, Krista, you, you, you know, my story and, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, uh, you know, I was the kid at the, uh, the book fair buying the Loch Ness monster, Bigfoot, you know, paranormal books or whatever. Uh, I would save my money and, and, you know, and, and get out there and, and, you know, spend it all on Bigfoot and, and Loch Ness monster books and, you know, I got into um, really got into primates uh, as well as a child, and um, you know, I know that's you know, if if, if you're if you're an aper, you can appreciate this, uh, but you know, for me, you know, getting into the uh, the mountain gorillas of Africa, Diane Fossey and Jane Goodall with the chimpanzees, uh, understanding you know uh, the species and, and things like that, it really fascinated me because. At one point in time, you know, uh, mountain gorillas were really a, a, a kind of a cryptid. You know, they weren't really mm-hmm. they're they're not really an, an um a, an, a, no longer an undiscovered species. But you know, for a while there, there were stories about them, and and lo and behold, they exist. So yep. you know, for me, you know, I uh, you know I really loved the, the you know uh, reading about Coco the gorilla, who was who was uh, uh, you know a gorilla that that learned sign language and and you know, really uh, expressed herself through that sign language. And that was just really fascinating. I actually, it's funny, I actually wrote to Coco when I was younger and she wrote back to me. And um, and I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. So, you know, uh, you know, cryptids and undiscovered animals and, 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 and creatures were really fascinating to me uh, as a child. And then, you know, fast forward to my adult life, uh, you know, I was totally ignorant to the subject. And um, I was on disability from work. And I was on disability for a while because I had hurt myself and, and um, I was going to be out for a few months. And, you know, I'm at home, you know, uh, by myself, not really, you know, doing anything and ended up binge watching uh, a YouTube channel uh, from a gentleman that was from Utah. And um, he showed 
trace evidence in the form of uh, wood structures and, and prints. And then he had his own story of his encounters as well. But what he presented were wood structures. And to me, that was fascinating because, you know, when you think of, of, of Bigfoot and, and Sasquatch and all that stuff and you're ignorant to the subject, you tend to think that it's just a Northern California thing or it's a Washington State thing. And, you know, if you watch the Patterson Gilman film, you know, you're like, that's that's where they're at. That's that's mm -hmm. that's it. You know, they're surely they're not here. Or, you know, if you're, you're the mindset of like, there's only one out there and we caught on the film and that was it type of thing, you know, and, and uh, I was totally ignorant to the subject. And I started watching this gentleman's YouTube channel and I watched all of his videos in one night. Like, I think I was done like at two or three o'clock in the morning. Wow. And the last video uh, that I watched, he laid out exactly how he finds his trace evidence. And, he, and one of the things he said was, hey, if you think that this is a hoax, you think I'm putting you on, you think I'm pulling a fast one on you. He's like, I'm going to teach you how to go out and find this stuff. And then come back and tell me, I have a uh, Facebook group, come back and tell me what you think. You think mm -hmm. this is a hoax? You think this, is, this isn't this is real? I'm going to show you. So I obliged. I took all the information. I took it all in. And the next day, I went out to go find a wood structure. And on that same day, I found a wood structure. And mm -hmm. I, <laughs> I was blown away because I thought this was just fake. Uh, I, I thought, you know, there's right. no way. There's people out there that are putting these things together and, you know, it's Boy Scouts, homeless people, the whole usual thing that you go through. And and um, then I was looking at these pieces and uh, they were torn. They were not cut. Uh, they were some of them were in 10 inches around. I would estimate 10 inches in diameter uh, around, you know, six foot uh, five and a half, six foot tall in an A-frame fashion. And um, I, I had to study that and go this this. This wasn't cut. This wasn't mm -hmm. put together by people. These are heavy pieces. What in the world or who in the world or what in the world can put these things together uh, and, 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 and have that type of strength to put it together? Because these pieces did not grow in that area. They did not grow in that right. area. And they were ripped out. Some of them had the root system still attached to them. And I thought, God, this is a really strong person that pulled out this tree from the root system, you know, and 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 stuck it upside down, you know, into the <laughs> into this wood structure, and then it mm -hmm. dawned on me that I don't think this is human, right? I don't think this is human at all. And then I I followed a very prominent creek that is in San Antonio. It is the Salado Creek. It runs for miles. It runs literally right down the middle of the city, and it it uh, it it goes for miles and miles and miles. And so, um, you know, looking at that going, okay, I've got a prominent creek with uh, a food source. The habitat supports big game. Mm -hmm. That was a big thing for me, okay? And, and the, the habitat that supports big game here would be white-tailed deer. We don't have bears, um, at least in, uh, that I've seen in San Antonio. Um, we barely hear about cats here and there. Maybe every few years you hear of maybe one mountain lion, you know, maybe. Um, so we've got whitetail, you know, the usual suspects, raccoons, uh, opossums, uh, you know, all, all the critters, right, uh, sure. that are typical, you know, uh, in, in, in a wooded area, aside from the other predators that, you know, you may see from state to state, right, black bears, grizzlies, whatever, right. So, you know, I had to sit there and go, well, you know, if, if, if it's not you know, bears that are coming in, if it's not, you know, all these other bigger predators, what is it like? What What is going on? And, and you know, what is, uh, um, you know, utilizing these creeks and greenways and building these wood structures uh, that are connected uh, to these greenways, uh, these all these wilderness parks? Come to find out, uh, all these wilderness parks that I have gone to have numerous wood structures you know, so then that begs the question of, OK, if this is people, if this is truly people, this has got to be one of the most elaborate and well thought out hoaxes ever. ever. You, you know, you know, I find it a lazy narrative and I've gotten comments from people and I said we're talking about some tree structures. And by the way, uh, Rod and everybody watching or listening, I have several photos you sent me of these tree yeah. structures mm -hmm. you come across 
But I yeah. got to say, I find it lazy where people say, well, that's just dead fall. That's, you know, a, an old tree that fell right. and all this foliage. Now, in some instances, absolutely, Rod, you would agree that yes. that does happen. Yes, it does. But, it does. but the person, when I say lazy narrative, is the person that makes calls on, on this, whoever they may be. Right. They don't take the time to investigate it. Number one, they're not in the woods looking at it. And you really can't tell that greatly the detail in a picture. Because a lot of these structures, time and effort has been put into them to right. weave it all together. Mm -hmm. And, and, it's, and it's, right. it's actually put together like a an engineering type of project, if you will. Right. Now, as a kid in the woods, Rod, you much like me, probably even Krista. I know she's probably has a little tomboy in her. We all made, we all made forts and stuff in the woods, and I yes. made it out of brush. But what I did we do? Thing. Hey, but what did we do? We went out with a saw. We 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 sawed off limbs. Yep. Around, and we took a lot of time, and we put it together. Right. Absolutely, that's, and absolutely, it looks like it's a man-made structure. Mm -hmm. We're right. talking about the roots, the rips, the twists, yep. and the weaving. With the branches and the foliage, can a man do it? Yeah, but why? But why? why? Yes. Right. Right. That's and that's the question. If if you're gonna tell me, see, I, I, and I get this all the time, right? I, and I, I and I, I would, on a side note, I would say if you're gonna get in this, you have to have thick skin. You really do, because people come at you with all kinds of stuff, right? They'll, I mean, they'll they'll insult you. They'll. They'll they'll make fun of you. That I mean, it, it's crazy, right? And that and that's hey, that's fine. I, I those people I don't even pay attention at all. But here's the thing: who is going to put together a wood structure with a ten foot tree with the root system still attached to it? Fashion it in such a way, whether if it's an A frame, whether if it's a, a lean, whether if it's a wigwam, what whatever the structure it is, right? Why? would they do that and if you're going to tell me it's homeless people these things don't keep out rain these these things don't keep out sunlight and furthermore the, the homeless people that we have in our area have tents they, they don't they don't get out in the woods and, and put pieces of, 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 of trees and branches together that just doesn't happen right and then you know the other question was boy scouts okay let's talk about that I talked to an Eagle Scout at the conference that we just we, we, uh, the, with the Queen mm -hmm. Brothers, the 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 monster, not the Monsters and Legends, but it, it the the conference that we were at. Yeah. And um, th this guy came up to me who who's a, who is a, a group member of mine and on Facebook. He said, "Look, I got to tell you, I'm an Eagle Scout. We never did stuff like that. Really? Okay, yeah. cool. So then I got another question: What if it's bushcraft? Okay. Well, I'm gonna entertain that too because. Here's here's what I, I I tell you. If I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. If if if, if if I if if you find folly within what I'm doing, I will admit it. I'm not going to tell you that it's mm -hmm. all Bigfoot or whatever. If if it's a person, then great. It's a person. Uh, uh, we we you know uh, mystery solved. There it is. Right. And in six years, Rob. In six years, I've been through all of my areas. I keep tabs on all of my areas morning noon and evening i surely would have run into somebody building these things i have yet to run into anybody building any of these things so what is it right or who is it and and to me it 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 lined up with other people that were showing the same thing that were in colorado oregon washington northern california oklahoma these all line up with other people that are finding these wood structures in the woods uh and, and and why why they what and why am i able to line up my des, the, the designs that i find with the wood structures up with somebody in oregon or northern california or washington state why is that happening either it's the most elaborate hoax known to man or we've got a sasquatch or a cryptid of some sort that that has some intelligence that is building these things and and to me, it's baffling. And, and now I've become more of the wood structure guy uh, because I've immersed myself in that area because that's the trace evidence that I find, uh, you know, other than, you know, uh, footprints and things like that, which I have done castings. 
I don't know if you saw uh, my table, Krista, but I had mm -hmm. you know, some castings there as well. So, you know, I do I do cast footprints. I do I do have you know certain things. My wife and I uh, recent well not recently last year um, had an encounter with something that growled at us that was low and guttural. It was low mm -hmm. and guttural, and it was not it was not something that we we would find that's indigenous to this area. It was. It was really weird, you know. So, um, you know, either we've got uh, a Bigfoot thing going on, or we've got the most elaborate hoax known to man. And I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with Bigfoot, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, there's so much data that we get, and I say this all the time. Chris assured me the same things over and over again that are repetitive is not people making this stuff up. You're not right. getting anything out of this. You're not right. getting 15 you want what you don't want 15 minutes of fame for making up something that to most people is boring. Right. I mean and not, you know, talking about a tree structure in the middle of, of the forest. And I I'm going to show some of your pictures here in a minute, but we got to move on to another sure. type of the tree structure. Sure. And I want your opinion on this. Sure. Now, yes, we have the X's in the forest. Sure. Now, Symmetrical yes, I, yeah, I can see an X falling is four, four, four feet tall mm -hmm. across. That can happen from tree fall. Sure. But we're talking about these ones now that are 15, 20, 30 feet high, especially like out in Colorado. They get right. extremely high. But the thing about this, the root system, they're, they're pulled out of the ground. Yep. And you see the roots literally... 30 feet at the top of this. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any human being that wants to pull off a hoax that elaborate. Number yep. one, they can't. Number one, you can't do it without a, a machine. And if you did have a machine, it's going to be give away that it was done sure. by a machine. Sure. So they're there. They exist. I get it. I believe in that. But my question to you that I always ask people, and we'll get back to your structures in a moment, sure. but with these X's. What do you think the significance is for a Bigfoot, let's say, to, to do this? So there's a number of things. Uh, one of them being a, a marker uh, for uh, for passage uh, as far as where they might be in that area. Um, the other thing is it could be a marker as a territory marker. Like, hey, mm -hmm. this is our this is our territory. That's yours. Stay away from our territory. You're walking into our our spot here, right? Um, or, I mean, what some people might say, oh, they're just art pieces, and these things just love to just make art. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll entertain that as well. You know, I I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to claim to be an expert on all of this stuff, right? Because here's, here's, here's the hard truth. We don't know. None of us do. So... Um, yeah, I, I would, my thing would be, I would go with maybe some type of a marker, uh, mm -hmm. of some sort. Uh, other people have said that maybe it might be a paranormal thing where it could be something that opens up a portal or, you know, whatever the case is. And now you're getting into the whole woo thing as well, which, yeah. you know, I started out, I started out and one thing I didn't say, I didn't tell you guys is that I started out as an aper. I was an aper. Right. I thought it was just a, a uh, unknown primate running around the woods. And, you know, that's what it was. And we're uh, it's undiscovered. But as I dug deeper and went down the rabbit hole, I found that I don't think that that's the case. These things are are are, um, are mm -hmm. I, I well, think they I think while they're flesh and blood and I, I think they do bleed, uh, I think I think they do have that element. I think also there is a supernatural or mm -hmm. paranormal element to some of them, you know, perfectly. Yes, and and we'll get into that a little later in the show because uh, most people familiar with BMR and Krista, mm -hmm. we are in the Wu camp. However, however, there is something about them that still carry that flesh and blood sure. physique or the physical because I think they are a blend of both. Yeah, and yeah. I've spoken and had a lot of of our Native American friends, First Nations that have that belief and some just think it's 100 percent spiritual and something right. otherwise but again we'll get on into that a little bit later yeah i i like the way this is going already so what i'm going to do is for everybody's kind of waiting to talk about some of these structures you've come across and i and i must say 
these are, are some I've never seen. I've seen similar, but not quite mm -hmm. to what you found, which I think is extraordinary. They're not in any particular order. You know what mm -hmm. I'm going to do first? I'm going to give some. This is what I'm going to do first for you. I'm going to give everybody a lay of the land. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give everybody an idea of what you walk through. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a little video that you sent to me. Yeah, and, and there, there may be something in the background people can pick out. I don't know, but right. here's the thing. This is kind of your environment, your territory. So right. it's about a minute 30 video. Yeah. And uh, at the end of the video, you can walk us through it. Here we mm -hmm. go. I feel like that was off. All right. All right. Here's my comment. Before you comment on that, I have to give my two cents right off the bat. I love it. And I'll tell you mm -hmm. why. Did I see a Bigfoot, a dog man? Yeah. Did I see any structures? No, I didn't. Now, perhaps you can specify after you come back and talk sure. about it, Rod. Sure. I love the fact behind that video, which I love to see because it's you out there and you have your heart into it. You weren't walking around, and I can tell this right away. You weren't just walking around making a video for people to show that you're a Bigfoot quote unquote researcher. Right, right. You can tell by your breath. You can talk about the excitement in your voice. Mm -hmm. You can tell everything. It felt so real and natural, regardless of what may or may not have been in the yep. video. Right. I do appreciate that. And I thought that was something I wanted to show to the audience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, 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 I, I sent that to you because I wanted to show you, you know, hey, you were uh, nice enough to put me on your podcast. I wanted to show you that I'm active. I'm out yeah. there. My, my wife yeah. and I are we're out there, you know, and and that area that uh, you guys just saw, that was an area where we got uh, two growls uh, from us uh, last year. And um, they were low, low guttural growls. Uh, my wife heard them first. I heard them as, uh, you know, second, like, because it, it growled twice at us, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And it was like, um, I have to equate it to like a, um, like a, like a, like a bass hit, like on a hip hop song, mm -hmm. you know? And it was, it was guttural at the same time. It was like, it was almost like there was like two different like vocals at once. It was like, you know? And so we felt like this was a site of habituation uh, where there might be some activity going on because, you know, we could not place that vocal anywhere else with anything that's out there. Rem and I'm going to remind you guys again, there's no bears. <laughs> there's, the, there's, there, yeah. there's no, uh, there's no big, hardly any big cats, you mm -hmm. know? Uh, so, so what is it? We, we, we couldn't see it. We don't know. Uh, and, and so we keep on coming back to that site, just trying to see what we can find, what evidence we can gather, things of that nature. And what you saw was just us kind of walking through that area again, just trying to get a feel for it, just trying to see if we can find anything else, maybe something we missed that we didn't see. Uh, and then, you know, something I thought kind of huffed at me from the left-hand side. That's why you see me panning to the left a lot. 
I was like, man, it's a thick area. And if you notice, you really can't see much through that area. There's there's some tall grass, but if you go a little bit further, it's really thick. So anything that was behind that, I, it, I couldn't see it. I, I could not see it. And then the continuous bad smell. My wife had said it smelled like dog, like it was terrible. Like, mm-hmm. and we and I was just, you know, smelling that as well. It smelled like, you know, it smelled like a trash can with wet dog. You know, what I mean, so. Uh, so again, lining up with other encounters that people have had with these things and not, and I'm not, I'm not going to say everybody has that, that everybody smells that smell, you know, because there are encounters where people do not smell anything and they encounter the creature, but there are encounters where they do smell something that sound that smells like yep. wet dog and BO mm-hmm. and, you know, what have you. Right. Mm-hmm. So the consistency of that smell was it lit me up i was like whoa it you could smell something and whether if it was a bigfoot or not i don't know but it seemed really suspicious to me and i put on the camera and i thought well you know what i'm going to show rob you know kind of what we do you know kind of how Mm -hmm. not necessarily how we do it but you know and you know and and that video you sent me that was to me i that was genuine and i and i loved it It, i liked it and it showed it and first of all right you don't have to to prove anything to me but a lot of times what people do a lot of people do this all the time and don't it's a lot of work it's a lot of work now it's just is it enjoyable absolutely it is you're doing something you want to do i i do have to say something though which is and anybody that has questions we do them usually not all the time but when we do today put them in all caps and we'll get to them maybe at the end of the show for rod but I do have a question. One of my friends, Rags, to Rich, just said out there, which, which I can understand, mm-hmm. is this. But then again, I know the psyche of the human being. I know how I would do the same. She mm-hmm. asked, or he, she, I believe it's a lady, asked, "Why whispering when you know Bick was there? You know, when you were whispering in the video." Right. And right. I think that was a good. I don't think that was meant to be. Mean. I think it's kind of a legit right. question because I would right. do because you know they know you're there, right? You know, I think that's to me that is something that we as humans do. You know, when we get scared, when we uh, when we encounter something we don't mm-hmm. know, we we quiet down a little bit, right? Because we think we think if we quiet down a little bit, maybe it didn't hear us, and you know, and and I have to remind myself again through hundreds of encounters that I've heard uh, and, and and people that I've talked to, you know, these things, these things can smell us probably a mile away. Right. Um, but, but, you know, as a human, as a, as a flawed human, right. Um, you, you tend to just kind of just go, okay, shh. <laughs> maybe they won't hear us. Right. <laughs> Chances are they, they can telegraph us a, <laughs> a mile away, you know, and, and that's just me being, I think that's just more of the human element of, of, of us, mm-hmm. you know, kind of thinking like, okay, if we quiet down, they won't hear. You know? and, and that's probably not the truth, but right. you know, that, that's just, that's just human nature. I mean, right. I, I, that's just, it is, and, that's the, and again, I know rags meant nothing by that. I just no. know. Yeah. And, absolutely. and the thing is, since the great commentary uh, mm-hmm. from her in the chat, it's a good, co- it's a good question. It's a very viable mm-hmm. question. It is, and so we're to, we're to get into a couple of these other pictures now of these structures. One of these, though, is my absolute favorite, and he's got some incredible pictures. Yeah, and here's one, and they're not in any order. Yeah. I have several. I'm gonna start with this one. Now mm-hmm. it's in the background, and again, it looks again. Well, I'll let you do the talking. Yeah. So uh, this was in uh, 2018. Uh, it was me and my son at that point in time, and um, I and I, and I love I love sending these pictures out to uh, uh, to people like yourself and uh, other researchers because to me this was just the pinnacle of, of wood structures in my mind. Um, when, when we walked up onto this thing, uh, it looked like just a pile of sticks like you see, but when you when you look at the other pictures. There is an inside, there is a, there is a methodology to this thing. It, it just wasn't a, a pile of sticks. It was actually well thought out, well put together. 
Uh, I would call it a wigwam structure. That's how I would categorize it. Uh, I have dubbed that structure as the beast. I call it the beast because it was literally the biggest wood structure I had ever seen. Uh, and still to this day, I have not seen anything that comes close to this thing. Uh, and and I, I, I freaked out because it, it was something that was totally out of the ordinary for me. Uh, I, I had no idea how to rationalize this. Um, and, in and in fact, if, if, if you want to get a little bit deeper, I actually took a wildlife biologist to this site, to this wood structure, to, to check it out, to get his opinion. He had no answer for me. He could not answer as to what this was or what kind of animal or even humans, for that matter. Why would they do this? Why would they put this together? Right. And so he it, it freaked him out, too. And so um, uh, this is a wood structure that I. Um, I have, uh, I said, I've dubbed, a be dubbed as the beast, and it is a very elaborate uh, wood structure uh, on the inside. But uh, from the outside, you would think that it's just a big, you know, pile of sticks, and it's not. Let me ask Rod: Have you got the the ones that I'm going to show are the exterior? Have you had captured any on the in inside? Have you ventured inside any of these? Yes, I, I do sometimes. It depends on the type of structure that it is. Um, now, I do have, I think like with any other researcher, I do have a little bit of, of a superstition stu superstition uh, to to these things. I, I, I um, uh, One thing I do not do is I do not try to change them or move pieces mm -hmm. around. No, I no, don't no, do that. Right. I don't do that. Um, uh, and I don't try to add on to it. I don't try to manipulate anything. Uh, because I, the way I feel about it is um, I feel like it's a very spiritual thing and a very uh, paranormal thing. And mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know what's going to come home with me or what would attach itself to me that mm -hmm. is it already attached to those things. So um, Again, I try not to do that. A lot of things that we're going to dive into as well. It, we've, there's about four topics on the top of my head. Yeah. And, and, Brand, and Krista, I always say Brandy, Krista, I love them both equally. I always say that. Uh, -huh. uh so we're gonna move for yeah mm, Chris, uh, <laughs> Rob it's been it's been a year now Rob it's been over a year Rob <laughs> I I love you here's moving on <laughs> what do we got here so this is, is it, uh this is from uh another this is from uh the left side if I can recall uh of that particular wood structure uh again looking at it from the outside it looks like just a big, you know, pile of sticks. Uh, and, you know, again, it, that is not so. But one thing I always like to bring attention to these, some of these wood structures is I, I, I always tell people, look at the size of these pieces that are involved in this. And then look at uh, look at some of these pieces that are actually pulled out of the ground. They have the root mm -hmm. system still attached to them. You know, so um, these are these these are things to notate, and these are things I think that people overlook. They tend to overlook, and and I get a lot of people that just write it off as just like, oh, it's just kids having fun. And I'm like, man, these kids are like borderline architects, you know, because when you look inside of this thing, it it is it is it is a an, it's an amazing wood structure, um, and and there is uh, there is some some type of engineering going on with this thing. Regardless absolutely. of how it looks, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna, yeah, absolutely. I, I do. I'm gonna go through some of these. There's so much I like to talk about, so I want to get these done here. Yeah. Uh, this same type. Now, I like this one, kind of like a, a TP. I see an yeah. opening there. It looks like, yeah. You know, these a hey, rod. Mm -hmm. These look like they look like dwellings, right? Where you could probably ha uh, have your family in. And right. I do have mm -hmm. to ask. I do have to ask for scale. How tall are these? Um, that one. I'm about five ten. I could stand up in this easily. Wow. Mm, wow. Like easy, easy. In fact, in fact, the, the, the wildlife biologist I brought with me, uh, uh, on one day that I took, I took, he was, uh, closer to six foot and he could stand up in it. Uh, just, he would just have to bend his head just a little bit. Uh, and he's about six, I roughly about six foot. Okay. Very wow. cool. Again, these are so cool. There's another similar structure. Mm -hmm. Now these are all different, correct? Uh, am I, I'm assuming correctly. No, Rob, this is all the same structure. Okay, but there's different angles. Oh, that's different angles. Yes, sir. I yes, tell sir. you what, that's even better because mm -hmm. I was trying to think: is this the same or different? But now that you mention it, 
all the angles. Yes, this is you know you mentioned architecture. Right I've never, now, for me, it's even more. Prevalent. I mean, look how it's how it's amazing. woven in certain yeah. parts. And yeah. as I said earlier, and and I have to apologize, Rod, because. Mm -hmm. First of all, I love the pictures, but now that you just said it's the same with all these different shots, this is an intricate piece that was not made by man. Absolutely no. not. No, it wasn't. It was not. I fully believe that. 100%. Mm -hmm. I don't want to show that one, but I'm going to show this one. And again. Look look at the bottom uh, from where I'm sitting, bottom left hand or right hand, wherever you're at. Look at the root system of this bottom piece. Right yeah, here. right. I see it. I just Look seen that. It. You no, can't. Yeah. Dis you can't dismiss that. You can't dismiss that. You know. Agreed. That, that tree did not grow there. Yeah, no, I, 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 I under, I agree a hundred thousand, a hundred percent. Yep. This is probably my favorite, though. They're all very. I love yep. them all here. I love this one. Right there. Look yeah. at that. This Isn't that looks amazing? like. This looks like a foyer, foyer, or foyer, yep. they say, entrance to a home. But look yeah. at the elaborate setup, the placement. Yep. You can see the root system. You can see they were put there. Yep. You know, and, and yeah. again, it begs the question, I'm not going to do that to make a hoax. I'm not going to make a dollar off of this no. hoax. Right. This, this, this is, and this obviously is not deadfall. <laughs> you know what I no. mean? It is not trees do not fall like that. No, they don't fall. No. They don't. <laughs> they don't fall to form a habitat. Right. No. Exactly. Yep. Yes, sir. Yeah, these are incredible. I was totally yeah. impressed when when I saw these pictures for sure. Yeah, you know they they are totally amazing. I love mm -hmm. the and I got to tell you, you know, and and I think it's open to a lot of people to have some speculation when it comes to the tree structure, sure. even if you believe in Bigfoot or seen a Bigfoot, but much like I have. But mm -hmm. to see these, you've really got something great going on here. Yep. Thank and you. this is in the, in the county sure. of San Antonio. Mm -hmm. Real quick, are these structures still standing? Uh, that particular one has evolved. Um, it is not as grand as 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 it was before unfortunately mm -hmm. um I've, I've got some updated uh video on my TikTok, bear county bigfoot okay. um of of that particular structure i call it the beast and mm -hmm. uh so uh, it it has changed a little bit um it's been added on to uh unfortunately i think part of the the roof area of it and i think you may show some of more of those pictures rob but um the roof area of it uh is kind of uh not caved in but it's a little bit lower which is kind mm -hmm. of interesting the pieces are still uh, very impressive though um i've been keeping tabs on that structure gosh it's been a it, i mean maybe it's been around longer than what i than when i discovered it sure um over 60 uh, almost six years so wow. there, there there's some there's some stuff that's new mm -hmm. uh but I like to call it, you know, maybe it's different types of ingenuity. I, I, I don't know, sure. uh, but it's it's still there. It's still there. How often do you go back and check on it? Uh, I do probably about once every three weeks. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's pretty incredible. I got to tell you, I'm, you know, you see a lot of pictures of of different structures and stuff, but I'll tell you what, you you take the prize home for that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Rod, you, Krista. The one I've seen, I'm telling you, he does. No, he, you know, I mean, he takes the prize home for that one, and I'd love to walk inside one of these things. I really would, just to see from yeah. the inner workings, and, and and for other reasons already going forward. I gotta tell you though, we're coming up. I gotta do that 52 minute thing. Sure. And we're not going anyway. I'm gonna get this out of the way because there's so many things I like to talk to you about, and I know Chris sure. does too. Absolutely. Before I get on into that. I'm going to pull up if I can find it. Okay. I want to thank Paranormal Pixie for gifting five Bigfoot Mission mem Rob memberships, mm -hmm. BMR Pirate Liberty for the super chat, and trust Jesus for becoming a new member. Thank you for that super chat. It's a great way to help support what we do. Becoming a pirate, you know, we, we, we appreciate the donations. It goes through what we do here for the channel. 
moving forward, our conventions, our conferences were going on. And don't forget, in June, June 7th and 8th, is the Bigfoot Michigan, the Bigfoot Mr. Rob Conference, I was going to say, the Alabama Bigfoot Conference, <laughs> with, BMR, with BMR and Krista. And um, subscribe to the Blondes and the Booze Paranormal Podcast on YouTube, Texas Front Porch, Bigfoot Mr. Rob, PRT, Josh Turner, Barton Nunnally over there. And don't forget, Barton Nunnally is in humanoids. And um, Truth or Tinfoil mm -hmm. with Randy and Randy. Yep. So, and Diva, and don't forget, Daniel Diva, thank you for that beautiful donation. Mm -hmm. thank she's, you. On it, and she's on at 8 o'clock with Texas Front Porch, 8 o'clock on Mondays. Great show with Miss Diva. Thank you for that moving forward. So, um, did I miss anything? You anything you want to add before we move on? You're on a roll. I'm on a roll. I'm on a roll. <laughs> I'm excited about this. You know, you know, there's so many. You know, it's not often, and I and I and I'm being honest with you that I get really excited about talking to somebody on a show because I watched a few things. And I was looking up on your Facebook group, and um, there's so many things, and and I'm, I have so many questions, and there's things about. Uh, San Antonio and the type of cryptids, the activity you might have come mm -hmm. across. Mm -hmm. So I have to ask you, you were talking about from what I gathered from watching a previous show about these um, aquifers or mm -hmm. right? can you can you talk a little bit about that? Because I was yeah. thinking, is that, a, is that a way to block other cryptids or people you think it's a block serves as a blockade or is this a simply a traveling yeah a, a, tra a transport traveling yeah. physically you know and and you know um i had to really look at where uh i'm finding these things in relation to what's called the edwards underground aquifer which is where san antonio gets our water we get our water from uh, underground aquifer uh, and that's what we've been doing for, for many, 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 many years. Um, San Antonio literally sits on an underground cavern. And that underground cavern stretches all the way up to Josh Turner's area in Austin and, and beyond, right? Uh, it, again, it's the Edwards Underground Aquifer. So if we're talking about an underground cavern with multiple uh, passages, uh, caverns and caves and things like that, um, my theory was that um, these things could utilize those cave systems uh, to travel mm -hmm. to and fro, right? Now, I have the mindset, and, and I believe this fully, I don't believe that our local government knows exactly every nook and cranny of that cavern. There's no way. Right. There's no freaking way, right? So... You know, looking at the lay of the land and how it lines up with that aquifer, it makes sense. And my my theory was was this: I I think that these things, these creatures, come out at night to do their hunt, right? Uh, in the form of of, of these white-tailed deer, right? And then uh, and then before you know, sun sun comes up they go back underneath underground and that's why mm -hmm. we're probably not having any type of encounters or things like that because you know in the cool of uh, uh, in, in the heat of the day which san antonio i mean gosh we, i've seen 110 degrees here and the humidity is horrible it's terrible here right mm -hmm. so if you're talking about you know a, a, a seven foot eight foot uh, uh biped uh with hair that's covering his whole body. Would you want to be outside during the day and during 110 uh, degree weather with with humidity? That's crazy. No, probably not. And, and so you know the cave systems uh, kind of showed me you know it's it's cooler. Uh, uh, there's probably not any humidity down there. It, it's probably a little bit better uh, uh, for these creatures to re to maybe reside or travel or what have you. So that, that was kind of like my working theory. Now, if you want to take it a step further, uh, and I don't know how accurate this is, I'm not going to say that this is gospel, but if you look at some of the cave systems and some of the missing people, right? Uh, you're talking about you know, the missing 411, David Pilates, 
that whole thing, right? Yep. It all lines up with underground caves and caverns and on those mm -hmm. systems, right? So again, now now we've got now we've got some of the missing people uh, uh unfortunately that you know have gone missing mm -hmm. and, and and um and these cases that line up with these these uh, uh missing report missing people report so you know there you go now have i've do i know personally of anybody or, or a friend of a friend or whatever that has gone missing around i i i don't but you know again it's kind of a working theory and that that's sure. kind of where i leave it sure absolutely Good stuff, man. You know, uh, it is, and you talk about these these tunnels mm -hmm. or underground caverns. So, do you subscribe to the theory that Bigfoot utilizes them? I was, now, we've always heard about the waterways. I believe right. they travel the waterways, the streams, yep. rivers, lakes. I also believe that they travel in the wilderness. You know, the power lines down, yes. down the mm -hmm. and uh, and. And as of recently, I've heard more and more about tunnels, the tunnel system. Mm -hmm. Typically, I don't think about Bigfoot traveling via a tunnel. Only because when I think of a tunnel, I think of something that you're on your belly, crawling through it. And I think that some, a Bigfoot with such a structure or its status would just right. prefer to both, you know, go through something on a, right. bipedally. But do you believe that Bigfoot utilizes tunnels uh, to an extent to travel i don't believe it's far-fetched to say that it could happen you know mm -hmm. uh, um, um I, I don't believe that it is is out of the question of whether or not that they whether if they reside inside these underground caverns or they use them to travel now i'm, I'm also a, i'm also somebody that su subscribes to that there are different types and different sizes of these of these creatures as well mm -hmm. so you know if we're talking about you know utilizing these cave systems to crawl through or whatever you know maybe maybe what i've got going on here are are of the smaller variety of sasquatch i don't know yeah. you know so again again th and these are things i can't prove definitively but it, it's just kind of a, a working theory that i've got um I, I now the other thing is um if you look at kentucky and you look at the cave systems there and the cryptids, cryptids that have, people have seen coming out of some of these caves, okay, <laughs> yeah, that now now becomes a little bit more viable and, and a little bit more believable because people are seeing some of these uh, having encounters with these, some of these cryptids coming out of caves. You know, uh, one of one of them being in the little small town of Hellier, Kentucky. Uh, I saw mm -hmm. a, a documentary on yep. Hellier, Kentucky, and 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 people have had encounters with some cryptids coming out of these cave systems in Hellier, Kentucky. So, you know, again, I don't think it's 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 far fetched to say that some of these animals, uh, creatures, can can utilize or reside inside right. these caves. Now, could I be totally wrong? Absolutely, I could be. But again, you know, this is something that um, I, I've kind of put together myself with the lay of the land and, and my research areas and how it lines up with those caverns. Mm -hmm. Right. Makes total sense to me. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Absolutely. There's, there's several questions. Um, you know, if you want to hit those really quick, so I have a couple more and Chris is certainly, if you do, well, while we could take care of a couple of the comments from the, okay. From the people in chat. Thanks um, everybody for coming on. I appreciate it. This here goes back to the picture of the tree structure. Okay. Says, I've heard of some structures that have fire pits and kindling, but no sign of fire. Have you run into any of these? Glenn asks. All the time. All the wow. time. Is that is that is that Glenn Parkinson? Glenn Dannison. Dan okay. <laughs> I thought I thought that was Parkinson. That's my buddy Glenn. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. I, I I that's actually a a constant with all my wood structures. Uh, that I've 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 found uh, there is uh, fake fire pits, uh, and there's no there's nothing burnt, nothing, uh, no no sound of no. fire. But it's like they put kindling together, like pieces mm -hmm. of bark and things like that, and they'll put it in the and then they'll fashion it, you know, with the rocks and everything. Like whoever it is or whatever it is, it's mm -hmm. a constant, and it's become like a signature uh, thing. I think you know with a lot of the wood structures, at least. On my end, anyway. Uh, right. Yeah, and 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 you know, I know uh, uh, another friend of mine uh, who has um, um, he's in a, a gosh, 
he's, he's up north. Uh, Christopher Noel, he has written, uh, or not written a book, but he has put out a, a video on some of that stuff that people have found. He's finding them up in his area as well, in his state. So, you know, I'm, I'm thinking that if it lines up with somebody else in another state with the same type of thing, you know, sure. I, I, what what it means, I have no idea. But it's it's mm -hmm. really interesting. It really is. Wow. Yeah. And uh, here's something else that's kind of like on the, that was uh, kind of about the structure side. Um, Chaos says, am I crazy for thinking the smell of these creatures are like a defense mechanism? It could very well be. Could you know, be. That's a good point there. You know, yeah. uh, I've heard people, some people say that they believe it's a gland that is uh, something that they release as maybe a defense mechanism, uh, a deterrent, things of that nature. Uh, I, I, again, that those are things that uh, go through my mind as well. So, you know, you, you're, you're, you're not, you know, right or wrong for thinking that you, you could be right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I think this is the last question on the tree structures here. Um, how near was the beast to human habitation? Oh, um, I, I'll, I'll be honest. I've not encountered uh, uh, the, the, uh, a Sasquatch. Well, uh, I elk. think he's actually asking about the tree structure. He was calling it a beast. Oh, the beast. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yes. I'm sorry. sorry. Uh, can, can you tell me, can you uh, uh, do the question again? I'm sorry. It says, how near was the beast to human habitation? Probably the structure to human it's, habitation. It's, it's, it, I'll be honest. It, it's, it's pretty close. It's pretty close to people. Um, I don't, I don't think now here's, here's, here's my thing. I do not believe that these things need to be out in the smack dab middle of nowhere in order for you to have an encounter or, or find trace evidence of these creatures at all. And, yeah. and, 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 and when, why I say that is I say that because there are several, I'm, I'm talking hundreds of encounters of people encounter these creatures in suburban areas. OK, but here's here. Here's one thing that remains. It is off of a creek or a greenway. That mm -hmm. these people encounter these creeks. So, again, we're, we're we're talking about a highway, possibly for cryptids and for animals. Right. White tailed yeah. deer. A lot of animals use creeks and greenways and rivers to travel in and out of areas. OK, so uh, this would probably be about, I don't know, maybe about a mile and a half, two miles away from, yeah. from, from people, you know? Wow. Not too far. I think the other questions are more so about, uh, uh, not the structure. So if you want to wait you know, on those, Rob? Yeah, we can, yeah, we can wait because I want to get into something too. And I see Rags has put up a new question. We'll get to your question again. Yeah. Rags. And Jojo has a question as and well. Jojo. Yeah. We'll get to your questions. We got, we got time left, plenty of time here. <laughs> I wanted to, Rob, being that you're familiar with, the location now this is um you're familiar with san antonio this yep. is where your investigations go on in i got a story from a person and i want you to let me know as this story unfolds what you think about this in relation to where you are mm -hmm. and also is kind of going to sidetrack us into what we we're going to ask earlier about about the woo right and mm -hmm. the um the other factors Right. And so, and I want you to know if you're familiar with these Palmetto State Park. Yeah, Palmetto State Park. That's uh, you've had you've had uh, a few sightings and encounters with with something that's out there. Absolutely. Yes. Well, cool because this is about Palmetto Palmetto State Park. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I want your thoughts on this. It was a couple Palmetto State Park, and they're doing their ritual, their trail. They walk the trails all the time. In fact, two of the trails that they walk upon are the San Marcos River Trail and the uh, Mesquite Flats Trail, if I remember correctly. Okay. So the two trails, Palmetto. So they're, they're about hustling and bustling about the trail. Had a great, beautiful day, and they're out about the woods doing their thing. Mm-hmm. And these two, this this couple, um, not Bigfoot ears, dogmen, paranormal. They're just a, a couple. They do their hiking, been doing it for several years. They start on the trail, and about um, a quarter mile into the trail, they started getting this feeling that we've all heard many stories about something was not right, 
something right. was maybe mm-hmm. they were being watched or something of that nature. And again, we've all heard that. Yeah. And so they kind of stop and they ask each other. They both had the same sense about that. And they blew it off. They've been doing this for many years. And they continue about the path. Mm-hmm. A rock comes from the wood line off the trail and almost strikes the man. And he mm-hmm. stops. He gets kind of ticked off. He yells out to his girlfriend or his wife, whoever it was, I forget. Mm-hmm. And it looks, someone's throwing a rock at me. He yells into the wood line. Mm-hmm. Hey, who's out there? Nothing. In fact, there's not a sound to be heard. Mm-hmm. They continue on down this track, down, down the, down the, this is the San Marcos Trail now. As they're walking, and all of a sudden, it happens again. Now, again, when I tell these stories, a lot of data, rock throwing, mm-hmm. you, you you hear about being watched, and you get these weird feelings. You're in an area you're familiar with. All of a sudden, it becomes not so familiar. Mm-hmm. So now this couple's getting spooked. So now they come to a fork in the trail is where they decide to go down to the mesquite falls trail Mm -hmm. they go down this trail and all of a sudden they get that feeling again and a rock gets thrown they stop and they stand there for five six minutes and they're kind of unraveled Mm -hmm. the sun is starting to set and now they know that they've gone too far because they always judge their they're walking about the sun with the time to get back to their original campsite to turn in. But they were so enthralled with what's going on. They couldn't, despite being scared, they still were in the state of what's going on. They wanted to be investigated, be inquisitive. Mm-hmm. So now here's where it kind of turns a little bit. They're staring down the trail, and they see this massive figure. Mm-hmm. Walks out as the sun is setting, casts a shadow. They say Rob is probably nine foot tall. It's just covered in hair. Looks like a humanoid of some sort, but they cannot pull out any details. It's just dark. Mm-hmm. The sun is now almost getting ready to set, as I made mention. It kind of lets out a little, like, little yelp or like they said they said rob for something so big which which took me astray it made mm-hmm. me think because usually when you hear about a bigfoot or a cryptic roaring it's it's robust mm-hmm. they said it came out like a little dog and they kind of despite mm-hmm. trying to figure out what this was they kind of laughed it off mm-hmm. but they know they're looking at something mm-hmm. that should not exist then all of a sudden this is where we get into a little of the woo factor a little different then all of a sudden, a big beam, a beam from the sky as the sun is coming down, takes over the darkness or the dusk, I should say, lights up the whole area. It's a beam, and this thing vanishes in front of them. Hmm. Now, this was in San Antonio, Texas, Palmetto State Park. So I guess what I'm getting back at is this. I know you've had no such experiences, mm-hmm. but it brings me back to a lot of things that people say about encountering a Bigfoot and there was all of a sudden UFO activity Mm -hmm. or something out of this realm. Mm -hmm. And I know you talk a lot of people and have a lot of different stories with the people that you come across with. Have you ever heard anything similar? And maybe perhaps more specifically in this location that I was just speaking of. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm familiar with Palmetto State Park. It is on the outskirts uh, of our city. And it is a uh, it it has had a a few uh, uh, encounters. Uh, I don't know if there's have been uh, some definitive sightings uh, of the creature, uh, but I do know that there are several encounters with something out there. Um, now, as far as the 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 light and things like that, I I I am of the mindset now that you know. Um, maybe there's some UFO uh, paranormal stuff going on with with these creatures as well. Um, now, I have heard of... Uh, now, this is a little different. I have heard of people encountering the creature, and then shortly after, 
they see orbs mm -hmm. coming through. Uh, I have heard of a, another encounter of, uh, you know, and I don't know how viable this is but, or, or, or how legit this is, but I have heard people saying, man, I saw one of these things coming out of a craft, you know, in right. the woods. You know, it, it, it walked straight out, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> of the, of whatever ship it was, you know. So um, I'm not going to say, like, that's uh, something that I've ever encountered. Now, my wife and I have had uh, three UFO sightings within about, I would say, about nine months. Uh, three. Yeah. Three. Uh, one of them was a big uh, triangle with one light at the point, the top, and then and then one at left and one at right. Uh, it was a huge, it was a huge, huge, whatever object it was. Wow. And it was just coasting, right? Uh, I, we, we, we tried to follow it. Uh, we were out in the country. We, we had a, we have, we have a, there, there's a, a restaurant that we like to go to that's kind of out, out in the, out in the sticks. It's a really cool restaurant. And, um, you know, we, uh, we saw this thing um, and uh it freaked it freaked out you know my wife and and my my youngest daughter and we were just kind of just like whoa what the heck is that and um we went through the back uh the the back roads uh trying to follow this thing and um i got out we went outside uh, we we parked the car off the side to go try and see try and pinpoint where this thing was and it had disappeared but what was really interesting was that, you know, in the woods around this area, um, there was just something really weird about it uh, mm -hmm. that, that didn't feel right. And, um, you know, I saw some, 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 uh, some glowing eyes in, in the tree line. Uh, they, they didn't see that, but I did. And it was lower to the ground. I don't know what it was. And I don't know what, what, type, what type of eyes would glow like this other than what i've heard of with sasquatch and bigfoot type of thing so you know again could it be like these things are connected probably i don't i, I mean i don't know definitively but um i wouldn't I, I don't dismiss it so i have heard things like that but i have not experienced that myself and i know you haven't experienced anything like that but you just kind of took the words out of my mouth and you've been doing this and everybody has different experiences Yep. Yours are big time with all these fantastic structures you found. And if you're coming in late, Rod found some great structures out for your researchers. You got to watch the replay. Mm -hmm. I think these things all come together. You know, you know. I told the story okay. about a potential UFO with the big light. I'm thinking UFO. Yeah. Now yeah. we're talking about. Yeah. I think all these things, whether it's paranormal, cryptid. Um, you could, you know, you can put in the 411. I think it's all related in some sense. Yeah, absolutely. So when you when you saw that, that, that craft, was it daytime or nighttime? Night. And, and, and was there any noise? There was no noise. It was just, okay. it was like the, the, the movement of this object was smooth. It was mm -hmm. just, it was right. just clean. Like it, there was no noise, uh, and 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 I thought the same thing. I thought, oh, okay, well, military, because you know, San Antonio, we're, we're military sure. USA, right? I thought military, but it, God, there was no noise, and it blacked out the area of where wow. I was coasting. It wasn't like I could see through, and then I saw three lights that happened to look like a triangle. Mm -hmm. it, it was nothing like that. It, wow! It, it blacked out that area. And, and and it was a huge. I mean, I mean, if I had to estimate, Chris, it was probably like, I don't know, maybe like two or three football fields long. You know? Wow, that's huge. Yeah, it was a huge, absolutely thing. Yeah. Wow. And that was outside of San Antonio. That was on the outskirts. It was uh, in uh, specifically. It was in Bull Verde, uh, yeah. outside of Bear County. Wow. You know, let me ask both of you guys a question, and I hear this all the time. Number one, yeah, I believe UFOs exist. I believe in aliens. I know. I don't believe in cryptids. I know they exist. Right. Well, let me ask you, and we all come across these stories, or we we watch different shows on whether it's television, YouTube, a, a craft, three football fields long, which I agree with, by the way, and I believe. Mm -hmm. 
It just came out over my property or came, it came out in my town. Mm-hmm. Yet nobody except for the person reporting it seems to see them. Now, my question is this. Is there a reason? Do you think that certain people they're allowing to see? Because let's face mm-hmm. it. If you've got 300 yards worth of metal hovering mm-hmm. in the sky, it's going to be seen for several mm-hmm. hundreds of miles. Right. Yeah. What is your thought behind why more and more people don't see these when it's reported as such? Uh, I mean, if you want to get spooky spiritual about it. Hey, I know, go, uh, I go. Well, this show is <laughs> all about everything. And the spookier it gets, the better. Yeah. I, I, I feel like we were chosen to see these things. And there was no, I don't think there's, there, there's a, there's a, uh, uh, I don't think it's just happened by chance that we saw three right. UFOs or UAPs, whatever you want to call them within a nine months, uh, 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 time that n- not many n- people go throughout their life without even encountering one, you right. know, much less three. So mm-hmm. then you got to sit there and go, you know, what, what why are why are we seeing these now have we seen these since no i have not uh and and i i haven't i don't know if my wife has but i i haven't and so um i i i feel like there was something there i i and that's mm-hmm. just me just getting really kind of weird and, and spiritual and spooky and whatever right uh i think i think maybe we were chosen to see some of this stuff yeah. and and for whatever reason i don't know I don't know, but right. but um, I don't think it's a coincidence that we. Did you happen to have any missing time or anything? No, no, not at all, mm-hmm. not at all. Um, the the second one we saw was a metallic object that was kind of like a smaller uh, uh, triangle, and it was spinning. It was three dimensional. We saw it clear during the day. Uh, mm-hmm. And it was spinning, and I thought for sure it was a mylar balloon. I thought that that's, that's a balloon, and then it yeah. started moving in different angles. Where I'm just like, wait a minute, that's not a balloon. <laughs> Balloons right. don't move like that, you know. Right. And and again, that was a, something that. Uh, what I mean, did we just happen to see that by chance? Like, is right. that by chance, or, or 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 is that something that we're we're being allowed to witness? Right. You know. Um, right. I, I don't know. I noticed there's several people in chat that also um, commented, you know, that they saw something similar to what you did. And I, there's sure. three or four people in chat. So I find that interesting. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and come to find out researching this type of object, the shape, um, it's been seen all over the world. That type of mm-hmm. shape, it's that yeah. triangle with the three lights uh, type of type of object. It's 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 been uh, seen uh all over the world uh, russia china mm-hmm. you know I, I i did kind of like a little bit of research uh on on people that have witnessed these things uh i I'll, I'll go a little bit further back i used to work for sony at one of the retail stores and um uh, there was a young man that uh i was an i was a manager i was of the management uh at that time in, in that store and uh a college age uh guy you know, a clocked out, left, and then he immediately ran back in, came back, mm-hmm. and he was just like in disarray. He's like, I need a camera. I need to borrow a camera. Quick, quick. So we let him borrow one of the demos. He went out to the parking lot, came back, and showed me a little bit of this footage. He saw the same thing uh, of, of this of this uh, object, and, and I, I've lost contact with that young man, unfortunately. I, I, I don't know um, where he's at, but um, he was blown away because... He saw something similar uh, towards the twilight, and uh, it was like a it was like a, a like a like a triangle, and behind it were several other little ships following it, just coasting along. And he said that there was people in the parking lot with their shopping bags just stopped, like with their mouths open, looking up in the sky, like going, wow. "What the heck is this?" Uh, and and it it. I mean, <laughs> a poor guy. I think it kind of. Uh, I think there's a little bit of PTSD with him because afterwards, working his shifts with me, he just didn't seem the same, uh, and, and it just really uh, did something to him. And so, you know, 
understanding that um, these these ships uh, or whatever they are kind of come through. Um, when I saw this 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 triangle um, shape type of UFO or UAP, uh, I reverted back to that young guy that was like, "Look at this!" And I was like, "Whoa, this is crazy." Um, so you know, I, again, it's one of those things where, you know, was he chosen to see that? Uh, I I, I kind of think he was, and and you know, I, I don't know. And I asked him. I said, you know, I said if this thing had landed like away from a feet away from you and just opened up would you have walked in he's like i'm i'm walking in i'm like dang <laughs> you're brave <laughs> but um you know everybody's got different you know uh mindset different theories and different you know feelings towards that stuff so you know i mean they yeah. do and it's been a fantastic show i have to ask you because and we didn't really we've talked about it but not in a roundabout way yeah when we talked about the tree structures i'm just thinking that's a physical labor is going yeah. on by the bigfoot right yeah I, I believe so and i also believe that some bigfoot can be spiritual as we were talking about mm -hmm. earlier about the woo factor sure right and certainly a spirit can manifest and create something out of their their mind right krista they can probably make that come to fruition without mm -hmm. lifting a finger but I believe this. I believe that these cryptids, we're talking about Bigfoot today, both. I think there's the woo factor and the physical factor. And as mm -hmm. you said earlier, Rod, Bigfoot, I think, is a physical creature, but it's got the supernatural element. You go back mm -hmm. to the First Nations, they believe it's something but spiritual. Sure. You know, it's not flesh and blood at all. Some mm -hmm. are both, and some are one side of the coin or others. Mm -hmm. So, with the experiences that you've had, people you've spoken with, yeah. When we're talking about Rod Nichols, Bear County Bigfoot, up until today, because my mind has changed over the last five years. Trust me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Today, so today, however, me too. <laughs> what do you What do you think? Because it's all about learning and people's perspective. Yeah. Right. Right. What do right. you think? What do you think, Rod? So, um. I'm a believer in Christ first and foremost. Um, mm -hmm. I put that out there. Uh, oh sure. Because that is that is that is that is uh, my belief, and 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 it is what I follow. Um, and and people have said this before. I believe these are remnants of of the Nephilim. I think the sons of God that came down and found you know uh, earth earthly women attractive and mm -hmm. had a relationship with them. And that's that's how we kind of are getting these giant. Now we're we're discovering some of these giant skeletons uh, through archaeology uh, uh, a, a lot, you know. And is is that by chance? You know, I, I I don't think so. I think that I think that they are of not maybe not of this world. Uh, mm -hmm. And I do think that they can uh, go. Uh, and, and again, this is kind of I can get into the whole rabbit hole. But, um, you know, I, I think that there are, 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 are certain, uh, um, I think there's dimensions. I think there's other other worlds that we can get into. I think these things can travel through. I think I think they have the element of cloaking, uh, a supernatural mm -hmm. element of cloaking. I, I fully believe that I've probably been next to one of these things and never even knew it. Never knew it. And so, you know, going back to, uh, you know, um, the Old Testament and things like that, uh, I think I think I think that these these things are are part of of, of remnants of the Nephilim. I, I think that's sure. what we're we're experiencing, and especially in this day and age where everything is heightened, everything is heightened. Right? There's so much calamity going on. Every time you turn around, there's an earthquake, there's a tsunami, there's something going on. Right? Why mm -hmm. is that? Why is that? And now we're starting to see more of these things come out. Right? So. Yeah, you know, you have to wonder what the purpose and the plan is here. I, you know, and I don't know, I don't have the answers, but, you know, going back to being kind of spooky, spiritual and a little bit of, of, of biblical knowledge here. I think that we're looking at remnants of the Nephilim. I, that's what I think. Yeah. Um, I've heard that many, many times. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'll go quite that far, but I'm not going to totally disagree. Sure. And I right. love all the opinions because there's something behind everything. This guy, Mark Beisel, hey, Mark, you're new. Thanks. He says a lot of First Nations tribes say Bigfoot were just another tribe 
and you should trade and celebrate with them. I've sure. heard that before. If we revert sure. back to Bigfoot of 1860, bartering, literally bartering sure. with cowboys and, and other First Nations yes. as, a, as an ancient human of some sort, right? An, uh, perhaps an ancient hybrid human right. or, just a, uh, or just maybe a wild man. Right. A wild man out in the wilderness. Right. That, you know, Daniel Boone came across a quote unquote wild man. Right. Mm -hmm. Which then he went on later to say, maybe he didn't say it, but it was prescribed as these stories go on and on as a perceived Bigfoot, right? Right. You know, and if you look at Roosevelt, he had his encounter too as well. Um, you know, there's a lot of people I've had encounters with, and and I and you know the First Nations people, uh, you know, uh, Indigenous people, um, I respect number one, uh, and and um, I, I will not ever uh, just to like just 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 for me to say I will not ever insult any of those beliefs at all because I respect them tremendously, and um, I, I've heard stories of in history of of these. Uh, creatures uh, bartering and trading or giving giving offerings yep. uh, to these things, but I also have heard of these of these creatures invading camps and taking women and children. Uh, I've heard of of these things uh, being uh, working themselves into a bloodlust uh, to uh, to to kill humans. I've 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 heard that as well. Um, I and that and that and that also begs the question of. Are there different types of these creatures? And I am of the mindset that there are different types of these creatures based on the facial structure, based on the height, based on the size, the color. Uh, I, I have heard, you know, we, we've got something called the Gugwi that's running around, right? Sure. Uh, I was just going right. to ask you about temperaments too, you know. Right. All temperaments different. are different. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. I, I heard some are more docile than mm -hmm. others. Here, here, here in Texas, they are of the mindset, and this is again through encounters and, and sightings. These uh, a Sasquatch here are not friendly. They are hostile. Yep. I I will say hostile. this though, I will say Boomer will say this. Josh Turner, that's Josh's name. He he he, he nicknamed me Boomer. <laughs> Those who don't know, but you well. Uh, but I yeah I guess thanks Josh. But anyways, <laughs> thanks for the super chat. For everybody who's contributed to the Super Chat Fund and become members tonight, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I've got to say, though, most people know BMR that's followed me for a while knows that I'm not a fan of Bigfoot being the big friendly forest giant. Right. And people tell me it's because you had a crappy encounter, which I did. Mm -hmm. It went far past being crappy. Right. But I'm going to tell you something. Even if, that, even if I had the friendly forest giant encounter... I'm not going to trust anything that I don't know anything about. Right. Especially something nine foot tall, 1,200 pounds, covered in hair, staring me down. Yep. I'm not going to invite you over for dinner. I'm not going to wedge you, bethrow you to my daughter. You know, <laughs> I don't care what kingdom you come from. Right. I'm sorry. That's my opinion. Right. People, people frown on me because they think Bigfoot is just a loving happy person an ancient person friend. an ancient <laughs> person if you will right now right. i don't knock any of those theories no ancient person right. ancient person fine mm -hmm. friendly forest giant fine a lot of people i've spoken with a lot of people i've had on my show have had nothing but friendly encounters but you know what happens the minute you stop that habituation the minute you stop being nice to them then you get the throwing of rocks at your home. You got four thirty in the morning at home getting pounded on by a big, a big hand. Your right. dog comes up missing. Right. I'm not suggesting it's Bigfoot at all. What I'm suggesting is this: as human beings, we've got no business becoming friends with anything in the forest that we know nothing about. Right. Talk about the Gugway. There's no Gugway that's friendly. They're called a face eater. Named right. by the Native Americans named them that because they take human beings, they eat their heads and yep. faces. They are not nice. Yep. Most of them come north of here, north of where we all live, Canada and, and beyond, maybe Alaska. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But no, these things that roam our world, whether they came from another world or not, or maybe, or maybe they've been here ever since mankind, we just don't know. Right. 
That's why I like doing these shows and have your perspective, Rod, because it brings a lot to the table here right. tonight. You're right. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. you know, I, I and here here's the other thing. Um, you know, we 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 try not to do a lot of, of the, the wood knocking or the whoops or things like that. I, I really shy away from doing those things because number one, I don't know what it means. <laughs> and nobody no, and nobody can tell me that they know exactly what it means because you don't mm -hmm. I, 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 no so so let's say let's say i go out and i do these things right and i've got a nine foot creature running at me okay what what, what do i do then right because i, I i've communicated something that I, I have known nothing about mm -hmm. i know no no knowledge what what do i do then i'm i'm wood knocking i'm whooping right this thing is pissed off it's coming at me <laughs> what then right what what do i do so you know i i i'm, I'm kind of with I'm, I'm with you on that rob because i don't i don't i don't and i'm not i'm not gonna i'm not gonna knock people or, or disrespect or insult anybody that's no of really course not no good, right I, hey man if that's you great but what i do know is this there is an element of deception in a lot of this right if we're talking about an, an intelligent creature an apex mm -hmm. predator we are not the apex predator out in the woods we are not. Well, These things are, right? So if, if we're talking about an apex predator that can trump us with a flick of the wrist, man, or whatever, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right. So 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 you know, uh I, I, I'm of the mindset that this is not my forest friend. Um uh, I'm fascinated by by these creatures. Um and and it's it's gotten me to where I'm I'm searching for truth. And I'm mm -hmm. searching for answers, just like all of us are. Yeah. And, you um, know, two weeks ago, I got to tell you. So I was at the Land Between the Lakes. And oh, wow. and uh, we're, there was a bunch of us there. And i not even thinking about Bigfoot at our cabin. Like, so we had some macaroni and cheese. And in a pan, I went behind and I, I kind of just scraped it out for the raccoons, you know, behind the cabin. But it was back a little bit. Mm -hmm. And, and uh the next day, uh, Bart Nunley was with us and he came in. He's like, hey, guys, we had a visitor. And sure enough, where I had scraped that macaroni and cheese, that leftover macaroni and cheese, it was gone. There was a dead cat there. Uh, whoa. Geez. Whoa. Yeah. So whoa. like everybody's like, you know, that was, you know, you gifted and didn't realize. And I had no idea. So I guess my point being is just be vigilant because I wasn't even thinking of Bigfoot. Right. Being that close. You know what I'm saying? Right. I was thinking, oh, I'll just feed a little raccoon or something, give him some leftovers, you know, right. no big deal. But yeah, that's a true story. Or it could have been it could have been yeah. a dog, man. You you could have uh, you could have had at a dog the LBL. Man. You never know. Right, right. That that mm -hmm. that that place has got all kinds of stuff going on, from what I understand. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So. And yeah. Rod, we didn't even cover. Uh, Warhorse did make a cool comment. Bigfoot knows about humans mm -hmm. big time. Yeah, he does. I'm, or he there. Bigfoot does right. Sasquatch does know about human beings sure. well before we knew about them. Reflecting back, you got. Chris mentioned the LBL. We didn't really touch on any dog, man. I know most of your things that you're um, involved with are predicated around Sasquatch. But certainly, you've heard of Bigfoot. Is there um, anything you've come across uh, regarding uh, dog, man? What's your beliefs on, sure. on dog, man? Yeah. Um, so this is another story that uh, was was very intriguing. Um, and it had a lot to do with uh, my my youngest daughter finding a trackway at a uh, at a park, and uh, you know we 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 my wife and I and 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 you know youngest daughter we we went out to this park and and just to try to kind of hang out and have fun and you know it's a wilderness park mm -hmm. it, which happened to be connected to that same <laughs> creek you know so you know I told myself you know uh, you know Rod you, you turn off the Bigfoot stuff and just you know have fun with your family and you know. And uh, I found that to be not true because I can't turn it off. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, uh, she she found a, a trackway uh, that was very suspicious. And um, I thought, well, you know, this is probably just people. And then, you know, come to find out, she was like, oh, man, look, look at this. Look at this. So I, I we look we're looking at this trackway. We end up following it down into a holler and we went down in this holler. Uh, there was numerous uh, wood structures in this. I mean, uh, we're talking like a few yards away from each other. And, and we're talking like maybe 15 feet uh, uh, tall wood. I mean, these are big wood structures. And I'm just marveling at them going, this is insane. Like, mm -hmm. I can't believe we just stumbled upon this. Like, I'm trying to have 
family time and then it turns into bigfoot thing you know so um yeah, so we're, we're looking at this stuff and, and i'm taking video i'm marveling at it and um and you know my wife started saying hey look it's getting dark you know i don't i don't feel right being here you know i that something mm -hmm. doesn't feel right at all and i'm like all right hold on let me just kind of you know me and my you know my tunnel vision you know as, as a guy i'm just kind of like you know looking at you know <laughs> videoing stuff and then and then my youngest daughter's like you know no I, I feel like there's something watching me we we, we need to go and, and it was kind of heightened a little bit and it, it felt a little um uneasy for them and and you know they picked up on something that i didn't and so i have to take that heed and and, and you know take it uh, mm -hmm. uh you know seriously and it, it was kind of like no no we need to go I, there's something watching me i don't feel good i don't feel good okay let's go so as we're leaving i look down and uh and i i, I happened to catch this uh this three-toed print and it, it was it was so uniform that uh, I don't think it was armadillos or I don't think it was uh, mm -hmm. anything else. It was a perfect three toed print and it looked like it may have had claws. Uh, and I happened to catch it just right as we're leaving. I, I snapped a, a couple of pictures of it or two or three, I think, of it with uh, my foot next to it. And then um, my hand, I put my hand next to it as well. And after that, I was like, hey, we got to go. We got to go. Let's go. Let's go. So, we, you know, I took off. And uh, and I, I had those pictures. And uh, at that time, I had connected with uh, Aaron Dees from Small Town Monsters, mm -hmm. and uh, you know he was writing the uh, the Dogman Triangle Werewolves in Texas mm -hmm. at that time, that which was the first offering out of uh, 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 Small Town Monsters Publishing. So it was like, I, to my knowledge, it was the first book that had come out of of that camp. And so um, I I'd sent that picture, those pictures to him. I said, Hey, this looks really weird. Like. What do you make of this? And he got back to me and said, "Hey, this is kind of <laughs> this is like in line with a lot of the people that I've talked to that have encountered this creature and that have seen prints. This kind of this lines up with 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 some of this stuff, Dogman related." And I thought, "Whoa, okay, now we've kind of thrown a wrench in the machine here because I'm Bigfoot minded, right? Mm -hmm. And now we're talking about Dogman and 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 people that have seen these creatures." Uh, 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 ranchers, uh, 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 professional people that have seen these things that have encountered these creatures, wow. and he's telling me this print lines up with with some of these encounters. Uh, whoa, okay, so we got something. So it ended up uh, making it into the the book, the the Dogman Triangle, and uh, the picture. And then you know, uh, Aaron was super kind enough to uh, write about three pages uh, on what I do in his book, which is amazing to me because i've never been in a book in in my life so uh and then then the the print itself the picture actually made it into the dogman triangle uh documentary movie as well awesome. so yeah it's what so i say that because you know i told my wife this the other day i thought wouldn't this be crazy this whole time we're not chasing a bigfoot we're chasing a dogman right <laughs> right Let, let's let's That'd be let's pretty scary you know let's right. let's what 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 if that's what's going on? And 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 what if that growl that we heard was not a bigfoot? It was a dog man, you know. So you know, yeah, Rod, Rod, Rod. You know, again, this is a topic for another day. How mm -hmm. is it that we even know what we're even seeing in the woods, right? Right. I mean, again, obviously, my encounter was. I tell you what, my encounter today, I still don't know. It was 100% a Bigfoot. Right. And I've seen it 90 feet away. You're right. all these stories. We've seen a shadow of a Bigfoot. Oh, we've seen a Bigfoot. Now, many people have seen Bigfoot and seen it. Mm -hmm. And they say yes. Same with the dog man. Right. Yeah. However, how do we know for a fact? Let's say I'm a Bigfoot researcher and I'm in my favorite part of town, my favorite forest mm -hmm. outside of town. And I'm out there, yes. And I'm thinking this. How do I know I'm not manifesting this? And how do I know my mm -hmm. projections are not being captured mm -hmm. by the Fae? Sure. Right? How do they not be captured by something that's going to show me an image right. thinking it's a cryptid mm -hmm. when, in fact, there's something nefarious that yeah. wants to get inside of me and come home with me? Right. 
Well, this, this is this is where I bring in Nikki Folsom, who is also in San Antonio. That's great. <laughs> I, I, I've been I've been promising her to take her out, you know, with us for a long time because she's very knowledgeable in the Fae, uh with fairies and things like that. Mm -hmm. and, and you know me, and I'm 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 of the mindset of not just take I I just don't want to take Bigfoot people out with me. I want to take paranormal people with me. I want to take UFO mm -hmm. people with me. I want to take people that are 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 uh, uh, knowledgeable in the Fae or are knowledgeable in other cryptids because to me i don't know what i'm dealing with i can't tell you that these are sure. bigfoot related things i don't know and so if anybody that can expand on that that has mm -hmm. that has you know given you know years of their life to the subject uh, i want to hear from you i want to know because i still consider myself a student you know, so you, know, you could you, you could very well be right. And I would not doubt if that's something that's going on, mm -hmm. you know, with with what I'm finding, things like that. You know, I took Aaron out with me uh, uh, one day, me and my wife, we took we took Aaron out to a, a couple of sites and um, he, he he touched on something, you know, like the tree bends. Right. The big arches, you mm -hmm. know, maybe that's something that has been noted in uh, fairy books as. Yeah. Uh, uh, some type of portal or some type of, you know, uh, passageway, yeah. right? So I don't you know, know if you can, I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but if you can yeah. read that, uh, Josh Turner said, Rob, let's go to the LBL at the end of the month. You guys come over there at the end of the month. I'll meet you guys. Dude. Oh God, I want to. Josh, shout out to Josh Turner. He's, he's mm -hmm. a badass dude. I, I love him. Yep. Death. He's freaking Agreed. awesome. So, yeah. Yeah, heck yeah, dude. Yeah, well, that's definitely a place I need to go. Because yeah. Because I've heard so much. There's another, and of course, my buddy Tex, Never been to with Brown Springs. I think Kristen might have been, but that. But the LBL, Springs, no. the LBL, the no, LBL. Uh, I've got to go there. Yeah, you have to go to the LBL. If you haven't been, you just got to go and experience the place. Even it, if you're not bigfooting, you know, just to was, check was the text place with y'all too. Did text go with y'all too, or no? No, text was not. Text was not there. Um, Josh oh. says, "Let's get Ken and force him." <laughs> Dude, yeah, heck yeah. Heck and yeah. war criminal says yes, Rob. You do. You know, I don't. I've got a lot of people out in chat want me to go down the LVL. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, war criminal is one that he goes with us a lot. Yeah, I know. Okay. He's war at the, he's great. at the, at at the LVL probably twice a month. Dang. All right, on. Well, that that's going to be the that's going to be our guide then. <laughs> yeah, it is. There you go with Rob. <laughs> yeah, and I do. Yeah, I see. Yeah, no, I'm going. To, I'm definitely going to the LBL. I'm going to do it this uh, summer, spring, whatever. This year, 2024. Yeah. Mark it down. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it. We're almost coming up close to two hours. And I before yeah. we cut this, sure. I don't know what it was earlier today. I told my goals for everybody earlier, all my people that watch me and Krista on this mm -hmm. particular show. Of course, I'm on nine o'clock <laughs> on Tuesday and one o'clock on Thursday. Mm -hmm. So I was sitting at three thousand seven, almost. Th I was nine away from thirty seven hundred subscribers. So my mm -hmm. goal, don't know what I have right now. We have our Alabama Bigfoot Conference, June seventh. Mm -hmm. My goal, everybody listening, if you're new here, please subscribe. I want it four thousand, which is only three hundred people by June first. That's my goal, my personal goal. And that'd be nice to carry into the conference where I'll be speaking. Yep. Krista, Barton Nunley, um, Martin Groves, Mark Groves, Daryl Denton, Greg Ogles. Greg Ogles, all those guys. Texas, uh, Texas spearheading it as host. So, yeah, if you're a fan, if you like the show, please subscribe. Let's get to 4,000. And that would be great. So I had to do that plug because you yeah. know we got to plug ourselves. We got to help course. us grow. And of I'm course. very, I, I'm satisfied with what's been going on. Of course, subscribe to the Blondes and Booze Paranormal Podcast. And Rod, what you got going on? What you got going on? Bexar Bigfoot, YouTube Bear County Bigfoot. Look me up. B E X A R Bear County Bigfoot. Uh, TikTok Bear County Bigfoot. Instagram same thing. Uh, and then I've got a private group that you can find. It's it's you can find it. It's on uh, it's on Facebook. Uh, Bear County Bigfoot as well. I keep it private because uh, I can I can kind of regulate a lot of the trolls and things like that. Uh, and and I I feel like I try to protect my people. 
from 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 you know uh, experiencing stuff like that. If if I can absorb the 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 beatings and you know all the insults, I'll mm-hmm. take it. You know, because I I don't want anybody else uh, in my group to 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 experience that. And and if if I can help it, you know. So, I understand. Uh, but Bear, Bear County Bigfoot, look me up. Uh, I'm on all platforms. Uh, yeah, except except and for you, uh, Twitter or X or whatever you would call. It. I'm not. I'm not there. I, X. I yeah, really I'm on X. I'm on it. Yeah, platform it's it's called. But, uh, well, but yeah, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Bear County Bigfoot, YouTube as well. And I do want to say, I've been saying Bex R forever. What was now, that? I'm sorry. I've been saying Bex R Bigfoot forever. Yeah. Now no, I know it's it, it's Bear. It's just well, Bear. It, it, if you say it that way, though, Rob, maybe people will be able to find it a little bit easier because it's got you you pronouncing the X, so maybe that helps. Yeah, I did, I, I and, think, I, and again, I I, 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 I've been saying that, and now I feel kind of foolish. No, no, I, no, no, but, not but, at all, not at all. But, but it is, but no, I, well, but I'm just yeah. saying, I, I get it yeah. now. That I finally, I've been saying it for like a year now. <laughs> uh, before we move further, everybody, this in chat, I want to thank Paranormal Pixie Laura for gifting five Bigfoot Michigan. Pirate memberships are liberty for the super chat. Trust Jesus. Trust Jesus is now a new member. He's awesome. a pirate. Daniel right. Diva for the super chat. And we also have two shadows for the super chat. And my buddy Josh Turner, PRT, for his awesome super PRT. chat. All the way, man. PRT all the way. Thank you for that. Mm-hmm. Don't forget to subscribe across the board. BMR, the Blondes Booth, Texas Front Porch. And uh, with that being said, Krista, you got something going on. Today is, of course, Tuesday night, mm-hmm. and you're on Thursday. Now, next Thursday, I have, Thursday afternoon, I've got um, a fabulous guest on who's a paranormal investigator slash psychic, oh. and uh, that's going to be a great show. Their name slips me right now. I'm sorry. The posting will be out tomorrow. But who do you got, who do you got going on Thursday? Thursday night, we have, um, along with Josh, he co-hosts with us on Thursday nights. A lot of people don't know, but um, we have Shane Michael Crisp on Thursday night. West Coast Dogman Project. Mm -hmm. Yep, Yep. we're going to talk some dogmen. Right on. Talk a little dogman. That'll be awesome. That's great. And then, of course, don't forget, we're on the Blinds and the Booze. They're on on Thursday at 9 and Friday at 8. That's Eastern Standard Time. Mm-hmm. I'm in the chat be, sometimes over there. Rod yeah, Nichols. Well, Rod, well, Rod <laughs> Nichols is like the master of Facebook. Every time I post something, I get a, a heart by Rod from Rod. So thanks, Rod. Yeah. For I always, I, hey, look, th- this is my thing. I always support my friends, and, and, yes. and you know, uh, uh, um, I, I'm going to repost. You know, if you got some going on, you know, I'm going to repost it. I, it's about support. It's about community. That, that's Absolutely. what I'm. About. You know, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Keeping everybody together, speaking the truth, getting it yeah. out, and who cares about everybody else? Because yeah, and Rod's one of the good guys too. Yeah, so you gotta be you. on the Show him some love for sure. Thank you. Thank Rod's you. Rod's definitely on the good guy team. Thanks for that. <laughs> and then of course I was gonna mention the blondes on your Thursday, Friday. Mm-hmm. Uh I'm on Tuesday nights at nine, Thursday afternoons at one, Texas on at eight. Bart Nunley's on at nine on Wednesday. JT, Josh Turner, you know, I know he, he's on like, I don't know what his schedule is. He's on all the time. Does a great job. <laughs> Arr, Maggie. He's a five month member, Maggie. Right on. Real, real quick, Rod, uh, uh, Josh just said, uh, Rod, hop on with us Friday. So maybe reach out to, to Josh. Yeah. 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 I will. I will. Yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, nope. Can I can I do a, can I do a couple of shout outs? Sure. Well, you can, if the show's not over, keep do what you so, need to do. I, I I wanted to shout out my my good buddy uh, uh, Lyle Blackburn. He's been a, a mm-hmm. big support and he's become a he's awesome a, a good mm-hmm. friend of mine and and I really respect him and love what he does. Uh, Ken Gerhardt, another you know uh, great guy, and mm-hmm. um, you know he's local here. He's in San Antonio as well. And I respect the hell out of that guy and 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 love him to death. He's a good dude. Uh, Ryan Edwards, who just came out with a new book yep. uh, as well. 
Uh, another he's cryptozoologist awesome. that you want to pay attention to, I think he's a great guy as well. Uh, Josh Turner, uh, who's been also a big support and and has spoke nothing but really uh, positive things, and I really appreciate it. So, and then you guys, of course, man, all, you know, all the way, man. I, I, I'm yeah. really, I'm really I, ecstatic. I, I will say this too about Ryan. Yeah, he was on with the Blondes, I think it was, or Tex, yeah. or maybe somebody. Young yeah. guy. We need the young guns out there. He's, he's very young, but he's so knowledgeable. He, he's oh, knowledgeable. Yeah. He, he, the kid is in his 20s, right. barely out of college. If he, yep. And he's written a book, had it published, 300 pages. Yep. I give I give a shout-out to him. He's, he's a I, good dude. And, and one last shout-out, too, I guess. Bigfoot Mr. Rob, my book. <laughs> I need 16 yeah. more people to leave a review for kicks it into the new analytics on Amazon to push yep. the sales. Gotcha. I think I need 16. I, I don't know what the number is. The link to my books in the chat. Thanks for all that purchased it. Thank you for the support from all the people that are friends with mine and Krista's across the board. And Rod, you're a new friend of mine. Yeah. Glad to have talked to you tonight, bro. Yes, yep. yes, sir. I, I'm honored, man. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. Until next time, all I need to do is find the exit music, and we can call it a night. <laughs> we can call it a night, Chris. Uh, as you know, I'm, 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 you know, pretend like I'm not Tex. <laughs> Love y'all. Thank See you. Y'all. Good night. <laughs>